One time on, we were on Ozfest 04, and one of my guys actually saw this on TV. I forget where we were, but we saw these lights. There was like, there was two of them, and there was like, you know, like maybe like five line or five dots, um, like right next to each other, and they would blink on and off, but they were kind of like all like moving in like a synchronized pattern. It, like, it's nothing I've ever seen before, and like the whole Ozfest camp was out in you know behind the second stage and in the parking lot, just going, wow, yeah, and um, never heard what it was, but it was. That, that was the most thing. And then one time when we were on the way home from a uh, tour with Opeth, oh. um, we were driving through uh, northern Florida. And I had just gotten out of the... It was just me, my drummer, and our drum tech driving the RV home because we didn't want to spend money on plane flights, so we just deadheaded, and someone had to take the RV back anyway. Yeah. And back when we were in an RV, thank God we have a bus now. Yeah. Um, I I'd been I was in the passenger seat for probably a good four hours, and then I got up to make a phone call, and all of a sudden I hear my drummer just like, "Oh my God, what the hell is that?" And like he swear to God he saw like a flying saucer hovering over, the uh, just like right off the side of the freeway, and he's the most skeptic guy in the whole band. That's so nice. And uh, he was telling me I had all these weird lights coming from it, and I don't know we didn't turn around we should have turned around, but I think we all wanted to go home so bad we didn't even care, but um. I was pissed off because literally, if I was, would have stayed in that seat for like two more seconds, I completely missed it. I didn't see it. So do you share these stories with like your family members and stuff? Yeah. What, what do they say about it? Oh, it's probably the same same reaction to you. They're like, oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you know, like, you know. About, wish I could have saw it. What about fans, man? Because I know uh, last time I talked to Dez, he was talking about how he gets the craziest fans. Yeah, I mean. What's your experience with the fans? It's well. Uh, I don't know. We got a we got a great fan base. It's cool. There's a lot of guys and girls getting double driver tattoos these days. Yeah. We pretty much see them in every single city we go to now. Uh-huh. Um, we were having a little bit of issues last night in San Diego, so we were about to start a song, but my uh, my guitar kept on going out, so he had to keep the the crowd entertained for a while. And we weren't even playing. He got a circle pit going. I know there's no music, but just start pitting, and they did. Dude, that's so nuts. But yeah, we got some pretty good fans, man. Are there any in particular that stand out to you over the years? Uh, well, I always kind of end up meeting the ones that end up getting hurt sometimes, unfortunately. Oh, yeah? Uh, we had one guy in Scotland break his femur during one, one of our songs. He went over the barricade, and there were no security guards up there, so he just fell. And uh, we see him every time we, we go out to Scotland now. He's got a big devil driver tattoo on his back. Um, I don't know. I guess some stand out more than others. Some of them, you know, I've become friends with, and talk to on you know on every tour and kind of look forward to seeing too because it's nice to have friends in different cities yeah kind of helps kill the time i bet man but as far as like crazy weird stories i mean nothing that crazy we're not molly crew we're not guns and roses you know yeah. most you know most of us have girlfriends or wives so we're all kind of mellow cool man i want to talk about the recording process you know, say we're going to write a new record right now. You know, what would be the course of action for you? What we do is, we kind of all, the, all of us have, except for Dez, to start kind of writing with, uh, and coming up with guitar riffs. And I have my own studio at my house that we do all the pre-production at. Okay. So we, when we're in the studio, we don't have to do any pre-production. And like, it's pretty uh, much all the music is done in the studio within, like, three weeks. Damn. So, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, and then we kind of write riffs. I write at home, and um, one of the guys or all three of the guys will come down to my house, and we'll uh, record it in there and kind of decide on what we want to use and what we want to take out and uh, hand out CDs to everybody and just kind of use that as reference. You really kind of cut the fat off songs when you're listening to it in your car a lot. And my girlfriend lives an hour away from me, so I have to spend a lot of time driving. Mm-hmm. And, you know, between uh, her house and my house, and that's kind of when I just listen to all the songs, and then we kind of get back together and say, like, I think this part could be better. Like, if you listen to it 20 times and you're bored or something, it's just, you know, it could be better, and then you just got to fix it. And that's kind of then, once we're happy with it, we get the CD to Dez, and he writes lyrics to it, and then we go in the studio and do it all over again. So he pretty much can put anything to anything. Yeah. 
pretty damn cool, man. Yeah, he just, we just, he kind of likes it too because, you know, we, sometimes uh, Jeff and John will get together and, uh, you know, just drum and guitar player and like jam the studio a little bit, but uh, we all kind of moved away from each other. None of us live in Santa Barbara anymore. Where do you guys live now? Uh, I live in Torrance. Oh, so you're like right here, dude. Yeah. Um, Jeff lives in Santa Monica now. Des moved just outside of uh, Temecula. Oh, that's kind of funny. And uh, Berkland lives in Ventura. And um, Miller actually lives in Albany, New York right now. What made you guys move out of Santa Barbara? It's it's expensive. And, it's just, you know, I, I was there for like seven years when I went to college. And um, to tell you the truth, I just like it better down here. I like being... The, the waves are around in... Uh, around Torrance and Redondo Beach are a little bit better than Santa Barbara, oh, yeah. and I like to do a lot of surfing and <coughs> kiteboarding and shit like that, and it's just, it's cheaper and it's a little bit closer to the ocean. Than, well, no, I mean, I was pretty close to the ocean, but I hardly ever went to the beach in Santa Barbara, because the, I don't like the beaches up there, they're not very good. Oh, uh, and then you went to UCSB? Yeah. I went to City College for two years, and then, or no, yeah, no, th three years. <laughs> Yeah, City College for three years, and then I went to Santa Barbara for two, or UCSB for two. They seriously have the hottest girls there at that school. Oh, it's insane. <laughs> it is stupid how amazingly good-looking the girls are there. I know, man. Like, it seriously really is. But they don't like guys like me. Really? Why not? No, they don't like metalheads. <coughs> Damn. Yeah, they're, they're all into the old the jocks and, you know, the frat boys and... Uh, Clean cut guys. I think I'm a little bit too messy and dirty for their taste. What uh, when you're what years were you at UCSB? I was up there. Well, let's see. I was actually in Santa Barbara from '99 until 2004, I think. '99. Wait. When did Lynn Strait die? He died. He. I was in high school, so that was I think '97 around oh, there. So you never really saw them play up in Santa Barbara. No, I mean I'm good friends with Mikey Dolan now, uh -huh. the guitar player, and uh, we. I mean, we toured with Snod with their new singer. Yeah. But unfortunately, that singer's not with the band anymore either. Yeah, what happened with that? I don't know. It really, it really bummed me out too because I thought they were really good and they were just about to go record a new record too, and who knows what's gonna happen now. Fuck man. It does. Sure. I don't know, but how did you meet Des? Well, let's see. First time I met him, it was just through these guys. Okay. Like I think Berkland was the first one to meet him, and then. Um, he came out to a show one time with my old band in Santa Barbara, and I met him briefly there. And what was your old band called? Sistrot. Okay. And then the four of us were in a band called Grolby together in Santa Barbara, and that's how um, we met, and okay. uh, so you know, kind of became friends. There were a lot of bands around like 2003 that were coming out of Santa Barbara. Fresh were four or five, and mm -hmm. like. Whatever happened to all those bands? Pressure 4 5, they were signed to DreamWorks and they were actually working on their second record and then they got dropped. And Good. they all kind of just. I guess they were just kind of over it. They, you know, the, they wanted to start families, a couple of them. A couple of them actually have kids now. Uh -huh. um, the singer's an English teacher up in San Francisco. I know oh, that, wow. Adam. And, um, yeah, then. There was. Uh, Band called Low Pro, who actually I think is still the other that did a few did some stuff, but uh, yeah, there was a little time there. There were quite a few metal bands that you know there was like three bars in Santa Barbara yeah. that we would play, and that was pretty much it. Maybe four, and then you can go play out in Isla Vista at a college party. But uh, yeah, there's really not much going on up there right now, unfortunately, as far as the whole metal thing goes. It's really sad. What's up, man? How you doing, man? How you doing? Fine, thank you. Good to see you too, man. That's okay. Um, shit, I forget what I was doing. Oh, when Pressure 4 or 5 and those guys were doing it. New Metal was like huge. What's your thoughts on how things change? Post hardcore I think it changed. Stuff now. Well, not really. I mean, I don't dislike hardcore or any of that stuff, but I'm mostly just into straightforward metal. Um, there are some hardcore bands I like. I mean, we toured with Throwdown. I think they're a great band. Barrier Dead. You know, they got some of that influence too. Um, I actually, I do think the whole metal scene has taken a change for the better. Okay. You know, that, that whole time where just solos weren't cool and, you know, melodic riffs were just kind of, you know, there was a big time where I just, I wasn't discovering any new bands I didn't like. And then I met these guys and they started introducing me to like Opeth and Inflames yeah. and At The Gates and all these Swedish and Finnish and, you know, Norwegian bands. 
that. But I was, those are my those are my favorite metal bands. And, and I mean, to tell the truth, there's not a whole hell of a lot of American metal bands that I listen to besides like Goth and Mastodon and uh, Lamb of God. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, Testament too. Yeah. They're still doing it. They always will. Mastodon got a lot of good reviews. On, like, See, they're a great like, band, man. They're yeah. a really great band. Do you pay attention to reviews and stuff, you personally? Uh, I pay attention to our reviews for like the first maybe month the record is out, or I guess that's actually one of the only time there are. But uh, Metal Hammer, yeah, Kerrang, yeah. I don't really search the internet looking for reviews, you know. And I read the comments on Blabbermouth whenever they say something about Devil Driver because usually there's something about like whether the record's good or bad. <coughs> it's all seem to be, you know, for the most part positive, you know, like 90% yeah. of it. So, I mean, and the people that don't like it, yeah, whatever, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. That's a lot of bands this, uh, as far as marketing and public relations and how that ties in with the success of a band. Um, I guess more specifically with metal bands, do you think that, um, do you think that it plays a big part? Yeah, it does. Closer? It does. Um, kids see you on a cover of a magazine or, um, you know... When I heard that when Dragon Force was on, you know, Guitar Guitar Hero, their sales went up like over a hundred percent or something like that from that. I mean, it was so yeah. Getting your name out there. I mean, a lot of it in the metal world, I think, is word of mouth. But I mean, that's how Slayer basically became who they are. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of word of mouth. I don't think you can. You know, they obviously had some help from like Headbangers Ball. I mean, that's how I got into them. Yeah. But um, Seasons of the Abyss. But. Um, yeah, I do definitely think that it does make a difference. Yeah, I just, magazines, you know, embracing the internet, not being pissed off at it all the time, and you know, for having your your shit getting stolen for free. But um, yeah, it does make a difference. Magaz- do you think it's made a difference in Devil Driver's success? I don't know. It's hard to say because. You know, we we went and played a show in Moscow a while ago, and like a thousand kids showed up, and it was one of the best shows we've ever played. And I don't think, I mean, our record label doesn't exist out there, not that I know of. You know, and it's just, um, I think most of those kids probably got into us for the internet. So it's like, it kind of goes both ways. Would we have sold more records if it hadn't been for the internet? Yes, without a doubt. Everyone says that we would not have sold as many records as a fucking idiot because of the internet but um the other side is you know you can go places that normally you probably couldn't have gone 10 or 20 years ago 